Hello everyone and welcome Crash here this RTA Motorsports. Today what we're going to be doing is talking about our new GPU back there and that is the Zotac RTX 3090 Trinity card and whether or not you should pick one up for your simulator. Here we go. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. All right, everyone, I just want to start by saying thank you so much for everyone who voted on the poll question that I posted in my community tab. If you haven't checked out the community tab, definitely check it out. I post a lot of random things up there, especially when I'm at the racetrack with my car. Uh, but this poll question definitely helped me out big time. I basically asked whether or not we should uh, pick up the 3080 or the 3090 and test that for sim racing. 64% of you so far voted for the 3090 so i just want to say thank you but you know if it doesn't work out as intended compared to the old 2080 ti that means it's also purely your fault anyway <laughs> just <laughs> just kidding but uh that brings me to the next point and that is all these benchmarks that we're going to be uh t discussing today and talking about are going to be based off the old 2080 ti that i've had uh that is the evga 2080 ti black edition and uh, so everything's gonna be compared to that card in particular. Uh, the 3090 here is a Zotac card. Uh, the Zotac card is pretty much based off the reference board, the reference PCB. And uh, yeah, so we'll kind of get apples to apples comparison from one to the other, nothing completely crazy, no water cooling or anything like that. And all these benchmarks are gonna be done basically utilizing just stock clocks. There's not gonna be any overclock unless the card itself boosts up to any sort of level. I'm not gonna be doing any sort of custom overclocks at all. Okay, so if you're new to this 3000 series launch, I just wanna go over some of the specs and information regarding this uh, 3090 here. So this is using their new Ampere architecture the 3090s were said basically from the very beginning that they are not necessarily gaming class cards that this is supposed to be a titan class card but it's the first time that we lose that titan name in a long time and now that a titan class card is joining the ranks with uh the other geforce gpus this is no longer considered a rtx titan anymore um whether or not in the future when you're watching this we do have a new rtx titan that that is that is yet to be seen but at the moment that is the mindset behind this card and there's some of the specs that kind of lean that way towards a workstation gpu so again this is using their new ampere architecture this is using their second gen ray tracing cores and their third gen tensor cores uh, again this card also has 24 gigabytes of gddr6 x memory and depending on the card that you get some of the third party board partners as well as the founders edition a lot of them depending on their power delivery and whatnot they'll all boost differently this one the manufacturer said it will boost to 1695 megahertz all right so let's talk about the system that we're pairing with the 3090s so we have the amd r9 3900x as well as 32 gigabytes of g-skill trident z ram clocked at 3600 megahertz and the motherboard is the asus x570 tough board okay so let's talk about some of the benchmarks that we used uh so we used a whole slew of sim racing based titles uh again i racing a set of course of competizione uh also we used uh race room racing experience for a little bit there um a settle corsa and dirt rally both have built-in benchmarks that use the game engine i used those benchmarks specifically because um i, I do like built-in benchmarks better than you know just driving on the track driving on the track i do i try to do exactly the same thing for multiple runs then take the average uh, when using built-in benchmarks it completely eliminates any sort of variability so i feel a lot more confident in those results to be honest with you um, but that doesn't mean to discredit the other benchmarks that we did i basically tried to do the exact same thing as much as possible uh, we also tested those titles or some of those titles i should say in vr as well mainly iRacing and the set of course of competizione uh, two very different game engines there, so I wanted to test from one to the other, as well as we also did some testing in and out of OBS. So those are going to be hopefully interesting to you as well. I know a lot of you uh, live stream or record your videos. And then we uh, carried it over to 3D Mark as well as VR Mark and got some benchmarks in there as well. So let's roll to the benchmarks.
Hopefully you enjoyed all those benchmarks. Uh, definitely feel free, rewind, look through them, pause it, try to get that information in. It took me all week with multiple runs on each and averaging it out to try to get all that information out to you. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of hard work and hopefully it, it's of use to someone out there. One thing I wanna say though is my 3840 by 1080p panel was used for all the benchmarking um, that we were in our titles. So this is synthetic benchmarks like VR Mark and 3D Mark. They have set resolutions for each run. Um, so that doesn't really much matter. We just used the presets for each run that we did with those. But as far as iRacing, Assetto Corsa Competizione, all those we used 3840 by 1080. Now, the amount of pixels that that's pushing, I felt was pretty useful because it is a little bit higher than a 1440p panel and less than a 4K. So it kind of lies right in the middle there. So both camps could kind of see where I'm running and hopefully you'll be able to get some useful information from that. Now, as far as that is concerned, I don't believe that this would have been useful to really test the 1920 by 1080 P panel. Um, at that point, at those high frame rates, a 2080 Ti, a 3090 is kind of overkill, unless you're running a triple screen setup, which I don't really have that set up here to actually test at the moment. But a 1920 by 1080 by itself, I think a 2080 Ti is gonna be more than plenty. Um, but you know, at that point, trying to test the differences between the two, you're gonna either see an architectural bottleneck within the GPUs themselves, or you're gonna have a CPU bottleneck. There's gonna be something else that's gonna be constraining you a little bit at that point. So you're not really gonna be able to stress the GPUs out enough to really see the differences at that point. Um, so I didn't really see the point in testing that. Uh, and this resolution, I know there's a lot of sim racers out there that are using ultra wides, or in this case, a super ultra wide, the 32 by nine. So I felt it was useful because it's not really many benchmarks out there for it. Now, as far as the VR is concerned, we used my Pimax 5K Plus. This is my go-to daily driver. You can see how big the lenses are in there. Uh, this one here, the, it's running at a much higher resolution than most of the other VR headsets out on the market, except for maybe the HP Reverb G2 that's coming out soon that we pre-ordered already. So if you have an Oculus, an Oculus Rift 2 or, you know, Vive Pro or anything like that, you're gonna be able to hit higher frame rates than what I'm experiencing in this headset much easier because again, more resolution, more pixels to push. Now, I did not run this with any sort of motion smoothing or anything like that. So what you saw the frame rate we got is the frame rates that were delivered to the headset. So as far as the benchmarks go, a 30 to 40% improvement going from the 2080 Ti to the 3090 was not expected at all, especially for normal rasterization rendering. I was not expecting that at all. Um, I'm, I'm extremely pleased with it. The only title that was weird, and I hopefully you all caught that, was iRacing. iRacing, there must be a bottleneck somewhere else. I don't know if it's the architectural differences between the two GPUs, or if it's maybe CPU, because I know that that title does impact the CPU quite a bit. Um, the frame rates were almost exactly the same. I mean, literally only within a few frames, if a few frames, uh, difference on the average completely. It was very, very strange. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but once we started introducing more things to iRacing, for instance, once we started OBS streaming, uh, that's when we really started seeing that improvement kick in. Once we introduced all that to iRacing, that's when we really started seeing the differences. And then because with OBS, we used the Invec, to, uh, Invec new encoder, which is a very efficient encoder uh, that is supported on OBS and Streamlabs OBS. Um, not quite as efficient as running basically dual PCs, but it's a good compromise. Um, once we started including that, 
that's when we started seeing the big frame rate difference in iRacing. And then we did on our VR benchmarks. Hopefully you all caught that because I try to let those benchmarks stay on the screen a little bit longer just so you could all see that. The VR benchmarks in iRacing and Assetto Course Competizione, I also did a benchmark basically running OBS recording at a much higher bit rate than I normally do um, with VR going at the same time. And in iRacing, we even saw a bigger gap between the 2080 Ti and the 3090. So in the end, <laughs> do I recommend you all go out buy a 3090 for your uh, for your rigs or anything like that? Um, honestly, it depends. Um, if you're looking to do content creation, because I know a lot of you do, a lot of you stream, a lot of you record your videos, I think then the 3090 could be of some use because really I was seeing once we introduced OBS, once we started introducing VR and OBS, the gaps were just getting bigger and bigger. And I'm sure as you include more uh, higher resolution panels, maybe the HP Reverb G2, or if we were actually running uh, the new um, Samsung panel, which is a 1440p panel, instead of our 3840 by 1080, once you start including more resolution, just more impact on the GPU, the, the gap is even bigger at that point as far as what the 2080 Ti and the 3090 can handle. Um, if you're looking to do content creation, yes, I, I wholeheartedly believe you will not be let down with this GPU. Um, if you're just looking to race, experience VR, stuff like that, at that point, it's a harder argument. I don't really believe that the 3090 is a great value proposition at all at that point. Um, I think it should just be just for the content creators at that point. Um, and I, I, you know, just for a 10% difference, I don't believe that that price jump is really worth it, especially being that it is rumored. Again, it's rumored uh, that there may be a 30, 80, 20 gig coming out. That's probably going to slot right in the middle of the two price wise. And that be, that may be a much better value proposition, depending on what they do with the price at that point. Uh, you kind of get the best of the both worlds. You get all that VRAM, but at the same time, you're getting all the horsepower of the 3080, which is really not that far behind the 3090 in most tests. So um, that's kind of where I stand with that. It's not a clear answer as far as yes or no. It really depends on what your situation is and uh, what you're looking to do. So yeah, again, if you look in the live stream, record your races at the same time, I think the 3090 is not going to let you down. Uh, but... If you're just trying to race and you could care less about OBS and all that other stuff, I don't know, maybe the 3080 should be where you're looking. And if you have not bought a new GPU yet, you may just want to wait. If you're if you're thinking about getting a 3090 or a 3080, this may not be the time with AMD supposedly releasing their RDNA 2 GPUs at the end of this month. There's a lot of rumors where they're going to compete. Historically, they have not been able to compete at the top end where this 3090 is lying. But there's a lot of rumors out there they may be able to, they may be able to compete with the 3080 with that higher VRAM that they have with the RDNA 2. We don't we don't know where they're gonna be at, but I, I don't think anyone should buy a GPU that has not bought a GPU yet until we know where AMD is lying because they are definitely disrupting the, uh, <laughs> the ecosystem here as far as the CPUs are concerned that we saw with their recent press conference see what they could do with the GPUs. Anyway, everyone, I'm Crash, this is RTA Motorsports. Please subscribe, I'll greatly appreciate it. Leave a comment below, let me know what you wanna see next time. Everyone, stay safe, stay happy. See you all next time.